I would maybe say that the whole thing with Sydney, if that is her real name, turning against Rock was kind of obvious. It, it just didn't... It really didn't surprise me when she said... It. In fact, I thought that she had pointed Rock out to the sniper the first time. You know, when he said... I thought the twist there, the ending of that sequence, would be that he shot Rock instead of Nick, you know, but then... And interestingly enough, on the DVD there's an alternate ending, and it has her not point out Rock, and she just instead turns irritatedly like, ah, crap, we've been caught, you know, it's over, more than... That just seems completely unfounded to me, I don't know. I mean, it was building so much up to her rebellion against him. And that's also a thing that it just only really set that up five minutes before it happened. You know, in the age-long series of flashbacks. flashbacks, That was where we found out that she was kind of not completely digging it anymore. You know? That was not the best aspect of the movie. I suppose I could point out a couple of the things that were, you know, for the cinematic value, where they took a little artistic license. Did the sniper really need someone else grabbing his shoulder and pulling him a little bit back? Or was that just to make us know that, you know, it was a bigger gesture than just him taking the finger off the trigger or something, you know? I mean, I would hope that snipers don't need, you know, I don't know, their spotter to grab their shoulder and pull them back if they're both told, don't shoot that guy. You know, that could lead to some unfortunate assassinations that weren't meant to be, you know, political turmoil, perhaps. That would be a little unfortunate, and I would maybe suggest to include that as part of sniper training. It, it, it might come in handy, you know, for, for the sniper to himself be able to say, oh, I was just told not to shoot that guy, maybe I shouldn't shoot that guy. Then there's that thing where the camera, they take a mini DV tape out and toss it in the sea and then proceed to take photos or something, or that guy takes photos of them. You know, I don't know. I'm not sure that it would have both tape and a hard drive on the in the camera, but again, they needed, you know, to show, ah, that's them dumping the evidence. And I guess them not deleting the picture that shows very clearly not them as the married couple was... I don't know, they, maybe they didn't figure that their stuff would be rummaged through, they hadn't had that much time to adjust to being these people. I mean, it had only been a couple of days, as far as I understood. Maybe they still needed, you know, visual reference of what their faces looked like. I like that the whole screenwriting thing, you know, it's, it's the little things. He didn't know the two quotes from Cool Hand Luke, you know, and a screenwriter probably would, so that kind of gave him away. My two cents on the thing with the tequila bottle and the scorpion. As far as I could tell, he picked up a scorpion in one of the flashbacks and later put that in the bottle so that it would incapacitate Nick because he figured that that would be the only way he could lower his guard for long enough that he could get a proper shot. Yes, there's also the analogy with, you know, dead when it goes in, alive when it goes in, dead when it comes out, you know, like in the cave, cavern there.
I think the socialite and slang thing worked well when near the end Rock said outstanding, you know, in a similar way to, you know, Nick's, you know, the that they were, that he was saying, you know, if you don't kill me now, I'll be you, you know. Did also like that Zahn was playing someone who was threatening, because at the beginning he's kind of playing what he always plays, you know, he's kind of short, he's not that butch looking, so he usually gets the roles as, you know, the sidekick, or, you know, he's not the stronger of the males in the film, usually. And I like that Mila got to kick ass and look real intense after playing, you know, goody two-shoes and really, really sweet for so much of the movie. And I would say she did both quite convincingly. I liked that the whole thing Sydney told Gina about Rock turned out to be true, and that that was, like, that was one of the few things she actually said during the movie that were true, and and the entire thing about her childhood was also true, of course. And that really made her character credible. I would also say his character is credible. And then the reveal when she calls him Rock. E. O. I O U. I don't remember the vowel. That was very effective. Suppose that's it. So, those were my thoughts on a perfect getaway. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.